Do you want to play copyrighted musics for your multi-stream, but you don't want to get in trouble with copyright strikes or getting your VODs muted? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can separate your audio tracks so that way you can play copyrighted music on Twitch and then also choose where to send your copyrighted music if you want to chance it for your other multi-streams. If that sounds good to you, then drop a quick like on this video so other streamers can find this video and let's jump into it. Before we get started, I want to make this very clear, and that is the fact that the Twitch VOD track feature seems to be very unique to Twitch which means it's almost impossible to be able to play music on your YouTube and kick streams without it showing up in the actual VODs after. However, in the meantime, I recommend everyone do exactly what I'm going to do in this video, which essentially is going to let us play copyrighted music on our Twitch stream, but then we can choose whether or not we want to risk the chance of playing copyrighted music on our YouTube and kick streams. Now, obviously, this is not the perfect solution, but if I do find a perfect solution, I'll make sure to leave it in the pinned comment down below. Real quick, if you want $25, then watch the end of this little segment and you could be a little winner. But if you want to take your stream to the next level, you got to check out today's sponsor, Sizzle.gg. Sizzle.gg is a website that automatically generates awesome highlights of your Twitch and YouTube streams and local gameplay videos and no annoying software you got to download either. Sizzle.gg will automatically pick the best parts of your gameplay videos and streams, turning them into clips and compilations for all the most popular games for free and any game and video, including just chatting using its new universal AI technology. Once you're on their website, you can link their streaming account, auto-generate your highlights, edit and download them, create custom compilations, and even convert any video into portrait mode for TikTok and YouTube shorts, which honestly saves me a crap ton of time. The basic plan is completely free and just for 99 cents, which you sure you can find in your couch cushions for the first month, you can get awesome perks such as being featured on the homepage, visited daily by a huge community and the ability of generating highlights out of any video using the universal AI. They're also hosting a free to enter giveaway where two winners who create a free account will win $25 through PayPal to buy skins or whatever you really want for any game. All you got to do is head the description and click on the sizzle.gg website link, create a free account, link your Twitch or YouTube account, and then you're eligible. So go make that account and I'll see you in the giveaway. Link is in the description. But enough yap and let me just show you how to freaking do this. First, we'll open up our streaming software. In this case, I'll be using OBS Studio, but you can also use Streamlabs for this. There's just a couple tweaks that I will mention throughout the video, but it's pretty much the same process. If you're wondering where I got this cool starting soon screen, it's actually from my streamer starter pack, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. So the very first thing that we need to understand is if if we go down to the settings in the bottom right corner and then go to the stream tab, we'll make sure that Twitch is our main service connected to our streaming account because that's going to allow us to go to the output tab, change it to simple to advanced, and then you'll see this Twitch VOD track setting, which is going to come in handy. Now, if you notice, all of my settings are on default, which I would not recommend here, but I just factory reset my computer because I was having problems. So just ignore all of the actual encoder settings and just pay attention to what I'm talking about. If you wanna know what the best streaming settings for your computer is, I'll leave a video in the top right corner explaining it step-by-step. Step. But what we're gonna focus on is the audio tracks, the Twitch VOD track, and how to multi-stream while using copyrighted music. So once you're able to see the audio tracks and the Twitch VOD track settings, then we're gonna go to the audio tab and just make sure that what we have here is set correctly. What we'll do first is set our desktop audio, which is going to be whatever computer speakers you're using or wherever you're hearing all your audio from. In my instance, it's going to be the speakers for my Yamaha ZG-01. And then I'm gonna choose my microphone from the mic audio list here, which is the Rode Pod Mic USB, which is also linked in the description down below. Then I'm gonna hit apply and okay. So then now whenever I talk, you can see my microphone here and then any game volume or computer volume that comes out of my computer will pop up on this bar here. However, if you remember my last video when I talk about how to play copyrighted music on Twitch, which I'll leave in the top right corner, then you know that we have to separate our desktop audio so that way we can separate our copyrighted music from our game volume, our Discord channel, and all that other stuff. So in order to start separating our actual audio, I'm gonna go to a new scene. So I got a gameplay scene and I'm gonna boot up a game. So I booted up one of my favorite games, Golf With Your Friends. Shout out to everyone that knows what that game is, Yorgi. But now you can see that my desktop audio is going up and down because it is picking up the game audio. So what we first need to do is add the game to our OBS or Streamlabs. It's gonna be a little bit different of a process for both, so pay attention. But for OBS, it's a lot easier because all you have to do is click Add New Source we're going to do add new game capture, hit OK. And then right now you can see that it says capture audio beta, which will automatically add a new audio mixer track down here and it'll automatically separate it. Whereas in Streamlabs, you're not gonna have this option, so you'll just add a normal game capture, and then you'll have to add a separate capture audio beta source after the fact to capture 
that audio. So first off, if Capture any full screen application doesn't give you what you're looking for, like it does in this case, but then we're gonna go to Capture specific window. We're gonna find the game that we wanna play, which is Golf with Friends. Give it a second to pop up. Now you can see that we have our capture. And then if we click on Capture Audio Beta, it's gonna add that new game capture audio track source. So as soon as you unclick it, it's gone. Click it, it's there. And like I said, if you're using Streamlabs, then you're not gonna have this option. So what you'll do is simply just hit OK after adding your game capture source. You'll add a new source and it'll be application audio capture beta, hit OK. And then you'll find where your game is that you're playing. So in this case, that one, you'll hit OK and then you'll have your audio track for Streamlabs. That is just for Streamlabs, by the way. You don't have to do that extra step if you're using OBS like me. So I'm gonna hit delete on that and we'll be okay. Next, I'm gonna drag my game capture below our little overlay. So that way you can see our dank little overlay up there. But now you'll notice that we are getting duplicated audio because the desktop audio is picking up every audio source that comes out of our computer. So an easy way to fix this is just muting it and you don't really gotta worry about it, right? If you really bothers you, then you can click these three dots and then hit hide. You don't even have to see it. But if you want it back for whatever reason, just hit these three little dots at the bottom and then unhide all and it'll pop up right there. So it's really up to you. But personally, I would just mute it to keep things easy. So now that we have our game capture right there, the next thing we want to do is add, let's say if you want to add like Discord audio or if you wanted to add your copyrighted music, then what you'll do now is click add new source and then application audio capture beta. I'll just call this one, uh, we'll do Discord, if I could spell Discord audio. And then from here, if your Discord is open, you'll click the window and you'll find Discord from this list and any audio that comes out of Discord, you'll be able to see through this source. Now, obviously I don't have Discord open, so there's no point in me doing this, but that's what you would do in that case. Now, the same exact thing you would do for your copyrighted audio. And I recommend using like Spotify's desktop software or YouTube's desktop software or whatever, because it makes capturing the audio a lot easier. But me being lazy myself and not liking to download things, traditionally I play music through like a Google Chrome tab. So what I will show you is how to do that, but I'll also talk about the downside from that too. Let me open up a Google Chrome tab of what I wanna play. So this is just a normal Spotify tab that I have in my Chrome, and this is basically no copyright sound, so it's just basically good music that doesn't suck and you can play on your streams. So if you want, I'll leave this link in the description down below as well, not sponsored or anything, but I just like it. So let's just start playing some music through here if I log in. All right, now that we're logged in, now I'm gonna play some music so that way you can at least hear stuff. So let me, Jesus, that's really loud. All right, so we got our music playing. So now let's go back into OBS. Now I'm going to hit add a new source, application audio capture beta. I'm gonna call this one music, hit okay. And now we're gonna find that Chrome window that we brought up, which is the Spotify one. So hit that and then hit okay. And then now if we scroll down, you'll be able to see that music tab right here. But keep in mind that we're capturing that whole Chrome window. So that means if you're playing other audio sources in that Chrome window that you don't want stream to hear, they're gonna hear that. And that's why I recommend going with like the desktop application or software or whatever for Spotify or whatever your music software choice is. But this is the lazy man's way to do it. And I'm a lazy man, so it just works for me. So essentially we have separated our desktop audio into multiple audio sources. So that way we can control where to send them to. So the next step in this situation is going to the settings in the bottom right corner. We're gonna go to the output tab. And now this is where the audio tracks come into play. So audio track number one, this is going to be what audio is going to be sent to your Twitch stream specifically. I'll get to multi-streaming second, but we gotta do Twitch first. So anything that's set to track one is going to be set to our live Twitch stream. As soon as we activate, so enable this Twitch VOD track, then whatever audio tracks are sent to, let's say six, we'll set it as six, then those audio sources will be present in that past broadcast VOD, AKA that video file that people can watch after your stream ends. So essentially what we're gonna do is send the music to track one, which will play it live on the stream, and then we're not gonna send it to track six, so that way it plays while we're live. And when we end, it's not gonna be in that past broadcast, so that way Twitch isn't gonna yell at us because it's not on their platform anymore. So once you have these two audio tracks set, then we're gonna hit apply. And if you haven't already, go to the audio tab at the top here and just change all these to 320. Like I mentioned earlier, I had to factory reset my computer, so all these are on the crappy default settings. So 
these are just the audio settings that I would personally change for my stream. So now that we have our audio track set up perfectly here, we're going to hit OK. And now this is where we're going to actually send stuff. So we need to go to the audio mixer down here. We can click on the little gear icon where it says advanced audio properties. So we'll hit that button. And now you'll see a bunch of scary audio tracks, but I promise it's not that bad. The desktop audio honestly doesn't matter because we have it muted, right? So really it don't matter. But if it helps you visualize things better, we can just uncheck it on all of these. So that way it's just out of the way. So the way that I like to do things when it comes to routing audio is track one is obviously going to be for our live Twitch stream. So any audio that we want our live Twitch stream to hear will be selected on track one. So Discord, yes. Game audio, yes. Microphone, yes. Music, yes. And stream labels, doesn't matter. Like you're gonna have browser sources or overlay files that don't play any sound. So you can honestly just uncheck them if it makes you feel better. But if they're checked, it's not gonna matter because they're not playing sound anyways. So then where it gets a little bit trickier is tracks two, three, four, five, and six. So to keep things very, very simple for you, what I'm gonna do is just close it. I'm gonna go to settings once again, and then I'm gonna go to output and recording. So this is where you can really utilize splitting audio tracks for your local recordings, because if we wanted to, we could add multiple audio tracks for our local recording. So that means if you're streaming and then you hit start recording, your recording will now have four different audio tracks because that'll make it a lot easier to edit your videos because that way you'll be able to have one track with just your game audio, one track with just your Discord audio, one track with just your microphone audio, and one track for whatever, like music, I guess. So that way, when you're in the editing process, you'll be able to have most control over all of your audio tracks, and it won't sound like garbage when you're editing. So that's why I typically like to record at least on two tracks. You could record on four. It's really up to you. And depending on what video editing software you use, chances are you might not even be able to edit on multiple tracks. But if you use something like DaVinci Resolve, which I use and it's free, then you'll be able to split your audio tracks like this and be able to control all of your audio in that video editing software. And it's so much nicer than being able to force to edit on just one track. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, honestly, it's not a big deal because this is for recording and completely optional because you're here for multi-streaming. So I'm just gonna have these four tracks as the recording hit apply, okay. And we're gonna go back to that little gear icon in the audio mixer to bring us back home. So now that we've established that anything on track one is going to our live Twitch stream, let's just say anything on track two, I just wanna have my game volume because tracks two through five, so those are four tracks, two, three, four, five, that's four. Tracks two through five are gonna be for our local recording if you even wanna locally record. So let's just say that track two is just gonna be our game audio. So I'm gonna uncheck everything on here but our game audio. And then track three is going to be, let's say our microphone audio. So I'm gonna uncheck everything but our microphone audio. Let's say track four is Discord. So I'm gonna leave Discord checked and everything else unchecked. And then track five could be whatever. If you wanna have the music that you're playing on track five, that's fine too. So now audio track two for our local recording will be just game audio. Track three will be mic, track four will be discord, and track five will be music. So that way when you drag it into your video editing software, you'll be able to have so much more control over editing and audio tracks. Which leads us to our last audio track, audio track six. And that is that Twitch VOD track setting, which means anything that's sent to track six will only be visible and heard in the past broadcast on Twitch. So that means we pretty much want all of our audio sources except the music one, because track one, we wanna hear it while it's live. Track six, we don't wanna hear it when it's not live, so that way Twitch's system won't flag it and mute your VODs. So now that we have everything set up how we want, this is where we get into the multi-streaming portion of it. So I'm gonna hit close, and if you've seen my videos, then you'll either know how to multi-stream using Atom or use multi-streaming using the multiple output. So if you haven't seen those videos, I will leave both of them linked in the top right corner. The first one that I'll link is going to be the multiple output which is going to be found under your docs tab. So if you don't have this OBS plugin and you need help setting it up, watch that video in the top right corner. And then right after that, if it's there, I'll also leave these in the description below. 
I'll also have the one for the Atom Vertical, which if you're streaming to TikTok or YouTube Shorts, then you'll want that as well. And like I said, if you need help setting up any of those, watch both of those videos, but otherwise just go and download them and they'll show up in your Docs tab here, assuming you installed them correctly. But we'll start with the Multiple Output tab. So we're gonna open up this. Multiple Output tab is essentially going to allow us to multi-stream two different platforms. So you can see I already have one for Kick and one for YouTube. If you don't have these, that's totally fine. You'll just hit Add New Target and you'll be able to input all of the data here. Basically just naming it, putting in your URL and your stream key, and then you're doing your video and audio settings. And then you'll hit OK and it'll pop up right here. To show you what it looks like for, let's say, Kick, I'm gonna go to my Kick one, hit Modify. It's gonna be the same thing. You can see my URL, my stream key. I called it Kick. The video settings, you can leave everything the same, but where the audio comes into play, you're gonna go to the audio settings here, and instead of clicking Encoder Get From OBS, we're actually gonna check this and do the FFmpeg one, and that will allow us to change the audio mixer track that we want to send to our kick stream. If we have the audio track set to one, that means that it's going to use our Twitch live stream audio tracks, which means it's going to include the copyrighted music, which in theory would be great, except it doesn't apply to that Twitch VOD track feature because that's just unique to Twitch as of right now. And like I said, if that changes, I'll leave a comment in the pinned comment down below and there'll be an update there. So in this instance, I would say specifically for Kick, I haven't heard of anyone getting in trouble for playing copyrighted music. In my case, I would probably just leave it on track one so that way they can still hear the audio. Obviously, that's still gonna put the audio and the copyrighted music in your Kick past broadcast, but I don't think they're actually doing anything about it yet. So in the meantime, I would just leave it at one. I would change this at 320. But if you're like, Cody, man, I don't want to chance it or in the future, like they do start cracking down on it. That's where you're going to change the audio mixer track from one to six because it's going to use the Twitch VOD track audio, which means it's going to have all of your essential stream audio except that copyrighted music. So obviously it's not going to have the copyrighted music while you're playing on stream on kick specifically but at least you'll be safe from getting flagged or struck in case that happens in the future. But like I said, right now, kick is all over the gosh darn place. So I'm just gonna leave it as one. We're gonna play our music there cause F it, right? So then I'm gonna hit okay. You can do the same thing for YouTube horizontal or whatever. So you go to modify, you're gonna put in all your stuff and then you're gonna change the encoder to FFmpeg. And then honestly, YouTube is the worst one when it comes to cracking down on copyrighted music. Like I play copyrighted music on mine and then I get an email after the stream ends. of like, there's been 60 different instances of copyrighted music detected. It's going to be like demonetized and it's gonna be muted. And it's it's just a shit show. You don't wanna do that, right? In this specific case for YouTube multi-streamers, I would highly recommend, don't even mess with it. Just go and set that to six. Obviously you're not gonna get copyrighted music playing on your YouTube stream, but you're also not gonna get hit with that nasty email saying, hey, it's muted, it's demonetized, all that. So I would just take the L and put it on six and then change this to 320 and then hit okay. And we take the L in the meantime, and hopefully there'll be an update with a better method in the future. Then hit okay. And so that would be it for the multiple output. Now, let's say that you are using the Atom Vertical plugin. So it's a little bit different. We'll go to docs, we'll go to vertical, and this will bring up the little vertical kind of platform thingamajig here. We'll go to the settings, so the vertical settings, and then we'll go to the streaming settings. So it's pretty much the same thing as we did for multiple output, but what you wanna do is scroll down and go to the advanced where it says use main OBS settings, and that's where you wanna uncheck it. So this is where you're gonna wanna change your normal like settings that you would have for your stream. So you're gonna to to go into, let's say your settings, be like, okay, I wanna use this video encoder, I wanna use 6,000 bit rate, whatever. So do that, but the important thing here is using that specific audio track. So if you wanna chance it with your copyrighted music and you're doing it on, let's say, TikTok, then you would hit one. But if you don't wanna chance it with your copyrighted music and you don't wanna play copyrighted music on TikTok or YouTube Shorts, then you're gonna hit six because six is gonna be the no music option, but still have all of your essential audio for your streams. And really that would be it. All you'd have to do is hit okay. And that would be all of the audio routing that you would need to safely stream on these platforms while you're multi-streaming. Now, obviously I know this is not a perfect solution, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled. And if you guys see anything, then please let me know in the comments down below and I'll make an updated video with the better method. Go watch my multi-streaming playlist that has everything that you need to know about multi-streaming. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.